we alive. That was the closest we've ever gotten to a proper three count. That was awesome. Right. Yeah. Anyway, hey guys, uh, welcome to an announcement hangout. Uh, this is a wrap up of Apple's announcement today. I have one and only Mr. Weinbag now from Some Gadget Guy. How's it going, man? What's up, everybody? West Coast represent. Let's do this. Sweet. All right, let's get the show on the road. So Apple made its Spring Forward events announcement today. And um, Juan, can you queue up some photos for us? If that would be uh, I can try and pull some up. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. So yeah, they made the announcement today, and they talked a lot about stuff. There's a lot of fluff in there. They talked about numbers and how they've sold 700 million iPhones and how they have 99% uh, uh, approval rating, all that fun stuff with viewers. And we actually started the show early at 5.57. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just looked at the time here. Um, oh, I wasn't well, even paying attention. It's like I finally got in front of my computer. We got to talk about this. It's yeah, I know. I know. I know. Well, bam, well, bam for like two minutes. So how's stuff? Yeah, stuff is great. Right, um, okay, moving on. Yeah. So anyway, Apple Apple announced a lot of stuff today, and um, one of the key, but well, starting with the first key thing they announced was the new MacBook. So it's not a MacBook Air, which I kind of called it in a video I'm, I'm editing right now, but it's the new MacBook. And that is the new MacBook. It is it, supposedly Apple, one of the thinnest and lightest devices at two, two pounds. It's 12.1 inch display, a retina display with a resolution of two, 304 by 1600, which is completely weird. And also uh, is 13.1 millimeters thin, which is very nice. Uh, it's thinner than your Surface, I believe, right? Uh, the Surface Pro 3. So yeah, it's I mean, 304 by 1440, so it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio because of that. Right. Um, but the very interesting thing about this device, it only has two ports. One is a headphone jack. Yep. <laughs> On the other side, the other side, you have a USB-C port, which allows uh, you to uh, connect the power and the... No, it's for everything. everything. If you want to connect an external display, you use this one port. If you want to charge up your MacBook, you use this one port. If you want to connect a USB flash drive, you use this one port. And so we're already starting to see cabling coming out from third-party manufacturers. The first one that someone linked on my Twitter feed was an $80 adapter cable so that you can plug more than one thing into this port at a time, which just drives me nuts in terms of design. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what's going to happen. I mean, I think that's the official one, though. If I'm not oh, mistaken. Yeah, that was that the official one. I think it's the official one at, 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 at eighty bucks. Yeah. But but uh, I mean, like, even if that was the third party cable, we can't imagine that the Apple cable was going to be cheaper. <laughs> no, no, it is not going to be cheaper, and that is what you're going to get. So that's uh, that's to be expected from this device, and um, it's very nice. Apple says nine hours battery life. They did they did talk about all day battery life, but I, I'm thinking that's for the MacBook Pros. Well, no, I mean, they were they were referencing it in terms of, of this Stand device by. here, where the, the nine-hour battery life is nine hours of web browsing or ten hours of video watching through iTunes. So they are trying to say it's nine hours of usage, which for most people you're not going to work in front of your computer nine hours straight, so that should mean all-day battery life. Yeah, so if we put it in PC terms, and since this device is actually using the Intel Core M processor, same processor you found in the Lenovo Yoga. Uh, well, and remember how everyone was cranky about the performance on the Lenovo Yoga? So yes. I'm sure, they'll all be cranky about the performance of the <laughs> this new MacBook, right? Uh, yes, we would we'll love to see what the, the battery life is and also performance. Now, the performance of that, uh, the processor is good, except, it, you know, of course, there's a drawback with, you know, in your battery, pretty much. Because well, I mean, instead it's, of getting, it's, yeah, it's how we get to a fanless design. Yes, definitely. Now the other thing is also pricing. Pricing is uh, starts at twelve ninety nine and goes to fifteen ninety nine, and fifteen ninety nine is for the five twelve configuration with eight gigs of RAM. So now that we spill all that, what is your initial reaction to that bad boy? So this is absolutely. And, oh. and remember, it comes in gold. Oh yeah, I, I please don't buy gold electronics. Just don't. I mean, for a phone, that's already bad enough, but it just looks so super tacky when once you start going to some of these other like larger devices. But this this is this is where I'm sort of a little frustrated with Apple at the moment, because this is the, the new MacBook is absolutely the laptop of the future uh, when we're not ready for the laptop of the future. And I think it 
clearly shows. I mean, this thing's going to sell like gangbusters. First off, let's just say this is probably going to be one of the most ex- uh, successful notebooks or laptops in the market as soon as it drops and people can actually get their hands on them. It, this thing's going to make money. That's that's not a question. That's not even being questioned at all. Mm-hmm. But what's frustrating is watching them try and push certain design elements forward. Like Apple used to be this great company for getting rid of old things that we didn't need anymore. But I don't see where Thunderbolt is an old thing we don't need anymore. I don't see, see where full-size three ports are not old things that we need to get rid of. Ditto some sort of display port or HDMI, some type of video connector, however you want to arrive at getting stuff out of. So this thing better have a, gr- a good dock or cradle-style solution. But it, it, it's, it's also just sort of... I thought it was really ironic how how much emphasis that Apple was placing on the fact that while the rest of the notebook and laptop computer industry was on the decline, that Apple managed to find growth in this market when the main reason why this market's in the decline are because of things like tablets and hybrids and convertible PCs and things like that. So as we're all starting, especially in the PC space, to look at devices like the Surface Pro 3 at the high end and then some of these new Lenovo tablets at the sort of mid-range, and we've got like these these entry-level Toshibas that are, the you know, a third the price of, a, of an iPad mini but can have all the functionality of a netbook PC... I'm not really clear on what Apple's strategy is. And, and, it, and it's, again, we're, we're another generation of PCs where Apple is not looking to start incorporating touchscreen designs. Apple is not looking to start incorporating modular design. Apple is continuing to sort of float in industry, which is dying. The PC market needs to die. The laptop market needs to die. We need to move forward. And this is a company that's now so conservative that they're actually proud of their successes in floating a boat that should have sunk or should be sinking as we speak. No, I, I definitely agree with you there with those points. I think, um, you know, one of the one of the things that I I, I was annoyed with that USB C port is is actually strictly this. Uh, I if they wanted to go with a singular port, if you're gonna do it, make it Thunderbolt. Yeah. Because it has the bandwidth and capacity. This is not USB 4.0 we're talking about, or no, USB 5. It's USB 3. It's USB 3. It's just a different. Yeah. The only um, thing, the only thing I don't board. know is does will Thunderbolt? Is I don't think the reference designs that I the I've read so little literature on this. So please, someone correct me if I'm wrong here. I've read so little literature on this, but I don't think that Thunderbolt would have allowed you to charge the unit. I don't know that the power I don't input s- on the I, Thunderbolt would. Have I, been I could I could be wrong. Compatible um, with the battery density that they were looking at packing this thing with. So so again, someone please correct me if I'm wrong about that because that's one of the reasons why I thought they were looking at going with USB-C. But you don't sacrifice one of the most flexible input output ports that we've ever seen. I mean, I'm still hoping we'll get Thunderbolt ports on PCs. So the idea that Apple is already getting rid of them because we've got some wireless solutions that are kind of good enough for things like data transfer. and You can always add adapter cables that are going to snake an octopus out of the side of your laptop because that's always way convenient, having a bunch of like dongles sticking out of your machine to do things like charge your laptop computer. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little... I, I'm, I'm not happy with where Apple has decided to take the MacBook. I mean, <laughs> slim is cool, lighter is cool, design is cool, the screen resolution resolution makes zero sense to me. I, I hate how non-resolution, I mean, how non-standard um, Apple displays are uh, in terms of screen resolution. No, no, no I, I, I definitely, see, but this is the thing. Uh, see, I, what I want to see, and I hopefully, uh, you know, competitors bring out things, or at least start doing the stacking campaign, because, yeah, it's going to sell, but you need to educate, you know, your consumers. Uh, first thing is Surface Pro 3. You know how Microsoft is going to bust out a few ads very soon saying, yeah, you can buy that, and we still run circles around it any day of the week with our mm-hmm. tablets. Um, Lenovo's La VZ is going to be hitting sometime soon, and yeah. that thing weighs lighter than this. It's thicker, it has USB ports, and it, right. feels, it feels like it's a pound. I believe. It's like one point something, if I'm not mistaken. It's really, really light. Um, so you're going to see stuff like that. Even Dell with the XPS 13, even though that is a thicker traditional laptop, um, but performance and what you're getting in price at $1,500, you're getting a pure core i5 and a traditional laptop with 14-hour battery life. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. like, I, I think this is where, this this is definitely, like, a conversation that we could have an entirely separate video on, so we probably don't want to get too sidetracked here, but it's, it, it, I think this announcement just further reinforces that Apple is not a tech company. 
they're not. They are a lifestyle company. They're a lifestyle brand. Um, we're not seeing them push the boundaries on, on tech. We're seeing them push the boundaries on design. And it used to kind of go hand in hand, or at least TikTok through previous generations, especially back in like the older days where they were still supporting servers and things like that. Uh, where they were still responsible for some of the tech um, advancement, you know, pushing the boundaries on actual performance. And here it really just does seem to be you know, like, oh, is your computer too thick? We'll make it thinner. And like, that's, that's cool from a lifestyle perspective. That's cool from a brand perspective. That's cool from a design perspective. But it doesn't necessarily mean to me that Apple is, is really trying to push the boundaries on, on actual performance, which kind of goes hand in hand with one of the questions that we just got in the Q&A from Christopher Miles. Mm -hmm. Will the Core M be powerful enough to get real work done, or is this just a Chromebook with uh, OS X and a pretty screen? So I know for me, I think the Core, it depends on what real work is for you. If you're doing really intense CAD work, you know, like you're trying to render CG, you know, animation or something, if that's real work for you, then no. no. But, you know, I'm, I'm more than capable of getting blogging, audio recording, and a teeny little bit of video uh, uploading and rendering done on an Atom processor. I mean, it's not as fast, but I can do it. So it's... The, I, I have to believe that the Core M will be capable of getting actual work done. It just depends on what your workload actually the, is. In my experience with the Core M, the Core M will get your work done. Video editing in, to input, uh, if you want to add that to there. But uh, your battery drain is enormous when that happens. It's one of those things where, you know, it's almost like if you ever have driven your car past 120 miles per hour, you see your speedometer going this way and your gas going at the same <laughs> speed the other way. That's what happens with the Core M. Um, but it, it's capable. It's just that you're going to get some drawbacks. That's, that's what's, what's going to happen with that. Uh, another question here from William Zhang says, Speaking of gold, my friend already posted that she is enamored by the gold, and she's definitely getting it, shaking my head. Aw. Yeah. Yeah, William, I feel for you, man. I, and, and the thing is, I, 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 I mean, I get it. But this also sort of speaks to me like that the, the target market for someone who is going to be shopping a computer like this is maybe not someone who really uses their computer. Mm -hmm. I just can't believe that the gold finish on this is going to age particularly well, especially seeing how some of the anodized finishes on is. the last couple generations of MacBooks have aged. And, and metal in general, I mean, especially like I'll look back at my HTC M7 and just kind of cringe a little. Metal is such a cool material, like it feels good in the hand, but I don't think it it's the most uh, attractive material for long-term life abuse as you kind of uh, use these gadgets. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. But uh, speaking of being a lifestyle company, switching gears to its other product, which is very lifestyle-centric, Apple announced the new Apple Watch. At least they announced the Apple Watch in terms of launch dates, um, pricing, and all that fun stuff. And can, can we get those pictures, Gator? Because when we get to that price, yeah, I think pull, people, people yeah, want to know pull, what yeah. that price I'm is. I'm going to pull the Apple Watch, uh, the Apple site back site, up. Yeah. So the, the Apple Watch, uh, just to run down some of the specs, it's got a... It's a, it's a kind of rectangular or square display, I uh, can't remember the dimensions, it's got a scroll wheel, it's got a button, uh, it's got a, uh, a heart uh, activity tracker, heart rate monitor, um, it's of course will work with um, uh, iOS 8.2, you can send hearts to each other if you need to, um, <laughs> and all that fun stuff. And with iOS 8.2, I think it, we should mention that, just like how people got cranky when Android phones started coming preloaded with like uh, Fitbit apps and stuff like that. 8.2 now has an Apple Watch app built directly into it. So once you update to 8.2, you should also see an Apple Watch app preloaded too. Yeah, which would give you a host of applications. There are a lot of apps already on board um, for this. Uh, and the pricing, if we can just stay on this image here, for the uh, Watch Sport, starts at $350 to $399, depending on the configuration of banding, of course. And then the watch itself is priced at 5 I repeat, 549 to 599 mm -hmm. And then the Watch Edition is strictly a 10G payment, or as Warren said, you need no, to... No, it starts at 10G. Start, sorry, starts at 10G, my bad, and then, you know, strap placements and all that fun stuff. Um, and um, 10, 10G, aka $10,000, let me, so let me say 10Gs here, and um, uh, Warren said you, you have to apply for a loan to get 9% to buy that bad boy, if you choose. Now, <laughs> this is me, and I'll tell you off the bat, if you have $10,000, you should either, and you really want to watch, 
start looking at either a Rolex, a tag, or something useful that doesn't actually depreciate in value and you can sell later. Well, and not just depreciate in value. I mean, this is something that's going to be very... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you know, like we, we talk about s smartphones, and especially if you're if you're a fan of any of our channels, there's a good chance that you probably cycle through phones a little faster than like a full two-year contract. And there's a really good chance that there is a number of you watching this that probably update solidly every year to every six months. So the, the, this, this, again, it sort of further reinforces the, the person willing to spend $10,000 plus on an Apple product is making a statement about being able to spend a lot of money on something, and they're making a statement about what they like to spend a lot of money on. And those types of fashion statements are very uh, sh small windows. You know, it's mm -hmm. like... You know, it, it to me it's similar to like when a bag is in style for a season. So a woman picks up a purse, and it's a stupidly expensive purse, and they're making a fashion statement and a culture statement, and then also a financial statement by saying that they can afford this nice thing. And then after that season is over, that purse probably won't see quite as much action as it did when they first bought it because we'll be moving on to the next new thing. We'll be yeah. moving on to the next new trend. And that's that's exactly what Apple is is the the statement that Apple is trying to make. So on the one hand, I really respect that because we've had conversations before about can we make smartwatches more fashionable? Can we make them the the sort of personal style elements that traditional watches have largely become? Because the functionality of a traditional watch isn't something that's mission critical. We have so many ways, you know, like checking our time from our phones. More often than we'll actually look at our wrists to do the same thing. But Apple is taking a, a conversation and they're running with it. Again, just like with the MacBook, you know, that's the laptop of the future if we were still going to use laptops in the future. And this is sort of the fashion smartwatch of the future. But we're still, like, they're skipping over some stuff in the middle. <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're skipping a few steps to get us there. And uh, I, I, I just don't, I don't see, just to jump right into the next point, I don't see where Apple has continued the conversation or it increased the conversation or improved the conversation over any other smartwatch on the market. So yeah. all, all I see is that they've designed something very nice, but we have nice things. I mean, I'm sitting here in front of a, let's see, I've got my Asus Zen watch and my LG G Watch R, and over on the charger, I've got one of my Samsung Gears. We have, we have some really fun options in this space right now. None of them above the 300 price point. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And just going back to some of these images, um, and you, you know, your whole uh, discussion about uh, uh, being a fashion statement. Uh, the thing about the Apple Watch, and maybe the, this is probably uh, might be a concerted uh, um, effort by Apple, is uh, this is the Apple Watch to me looks like a female fashion statement, not a male watch fashion statement at all. It looks like they have decided to go for a certain target market, and that's what they're doing because. If I were to pick this up and stack it to any, uh, if I get the chance to do a comparison for that 10K watch, I am comparing it against the most expensive Rolex I can find. And um, <laughs> it, it just, to me, just doesn't compare. Um, and the problem I see with that, especially um, uh, using a, uh, putting a smartwatch at that price range, is that at the very end of the day, probably by next year, this watch would be only valued in its weight in gold on there. Well, and, and that is and, pretty much it, because the battery also would decay. Yeah, um, you're going to have issues with it, and eventually, if I take it, you know, if I even try to sell it, unless I I kept it in a box and never touched it and said this is the first Apple Watch, you know, kind of thing, mm -hmm. that's gold. Um, I, I'm not gonna get any value off that. Uh, the other thing we forgot to quickly mention, it does come in two sizes, 38 millimeters and 42 millimeters. Apple is talking about different wrist sizes, so you know they give you some options in there, and that's probably where some of those price differences between the 349 and the uh, 399 and the 549 and the 599 come into play uh, in there. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, well, and then also one thing we should mention in the price point on the Apple Watch, not the Sport. The Sport just uses a strengthened glass, and the Apple Watch, the the mid tier, the five hundred dollar uh, watch, uh, comes with a s sapphire crystal display. So that at least is kind of nice because I have I have lightly scratched the uh, the surface on my um, Asus Zen watch, and that's kind of a bummer just because I you know I, I think we should all be moving to sapphire for Electronics. I think it's a it's a much nicer material to make this stuff out of. But I still don't see where <laughs> this justifies a price point. I mean, the the Apple Watch with a sapphire display costs more than a Kyocera Brigadier 
with a sapphire display, which is its own phone. So uh, I, I just I, I'm I do not understand Apple's pricing here when I don't think they've done any better job. And I think they've fallen for the same trap that we've we've complained about with Samsung, where mm-hmm. they're trying to bolt a phone to your wrist. And they haven't really refined the experience that I can see to any great degree over what their competitors are doing in the space. Uh, no, no. Uh, Raymond, uh, Raymond Ang- Anglada, Anglada, sorry, uh, says three forty nine or ten thousand for your new Apple Watch. Does eighteen karat gold cost that much? The amount of gold they put into that thing, absolutely not. Well, and also, wasn't there a patent filed where Apple was able to? infuse 18 karat gold with some other type of ceramic material to strengthen it. So it's also, I don't know that it's, it's also, pure at that point. <laughs> sure. I mean, like, you know, 18 karat gold is not pure gold. So yeah. you know, 24 karat gold is pure it gold. Is. Exactly. Um, oh, so, maybe. but, but then also, I mean, what we're talking about is sort of an infused, not alloy, because if it were another metal, I think they would have to disclose that it was a gold metal alloy, but they've infused it with something else. And I, again, I could totally be wrong about that, but I could have sworn I saw the patent fr- filing for that uh, a little while back. Uh, Christopher Miles says, would you rather get a $1,000 Apple Watch? Oh, sorry, I guess maybe 10000 is what we're referring to, a uh, watch, or a $1,000 Huawei watch, because the Huawei watch is also rumored to be priced high. Um, for me personally, I, I don't know, I don't think smartwatches are anywhere near offering up the sense of style uh, and functionality that would warrant any price points anywhere near a thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, I I could see where if a citizen or a Movado got into the smartwatch game, even with the current layout for Android Wear, which I'm still very critical of Android Wear as a global as a as an ecosystem experience. But if Movado were to deliver me, you know, a Movado built designed smartwatch, yeah. I, I could I could see climbing into some some higher price points. If Citizen were to deliver me um, just a an, oh, it's just a beautifully simple citizen style smartwatch. I could see maybe starting to climb towards that thousand dollar price point. I don't trust a thousand dollar price point for a fashion accent when it comes from a tech company. And no, I definitely agree. I, and and you just kind of brought something to mind, which actually has nothing to do with Apple. But I was thinking, if if I could have that switch Swiss clock. Um, uh, me- mechanism, a thicker watch frame. Watches can be anywhere thick. It doesn't matter. People complain about size. Well, for men especially. I mean, we get yeah, the benefit of if, if, if we want to wear something tiny and slim, we can. If we want to wear can, something yeah. huge and bold, we can. I, I, I can totally appreciate where women don't always get the same sort of fashion flexibility. <laughs> no, true. But if you're doing, say, from some, like I say, you, whether it's a Movado or Citizens or a Seco, right? When yeah. you have that um, Swiss mechanical mechanism that is run by kinetic energy, and then on the top, there is some kind of layered display that is see-through, that whenever oh, yeah. you're using that, uh, you're using your application that comes up, and then your watch, just see you can see the watch right below. Totally. That would be great, and even if your battery dies, you're still going off kinetic energy, and you still have a watch. Well, and that's what I've always, I mean, that's what I've, I love about Martian in this space. They're sort of the the dumb watch with smart features company, you know, like they've got the little LCD screen at the bottom of their watch that feeds you just little notifications and updates and alerts. But, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I keep turning back to a company like Citizen is because I, I just have a fetish for how simple their analog chronograph face is. Um, and I just have always loved how clean and how simple that is. And so if you were to layer information on top of that, that could be a really compelling best of both worlds solution. Mm-hmm. Um, and something that because it's just simply a nice timepiece that I probably would have easily spent five five hundred a thousand dollars on, um, adding smart features to that makes a lot of sense. So I, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm torn. I'm sorry, Christopher. We sort of rambled into answering your question and then sort of didn't answer your question as I kind of hit the big red cop out button before. Uh, we, we have a, we have a few more comments and questions here. We have one from uh, from the video here from Stai Garros. He says, "I feel like uh, I'm the only one on the planet that sees the secondary devices for what they are. More ways for companies to collect your data in a big way. That is very true. Um, yeah, and also more ways to get your cash." Well, I mean, it's it's not about whether or not they get something from you, in my opinion. I, I mean, because we're talking about Apple here specifically, and they rolled out all of their new um, health and research. Yeah, we should talk and, about that briefly, too. Um, so, so I mean, they're, they're going to be getting into scientific research in a big way, and you can opt in to some of these, uh, to some of this uh, testing and some of this uh, scientific study. 
And, and I think that's a very noble pursuit. And that's not Apple getting your information. They're not pulling the wool over your eyes, and they're not stealing this stuff from you. Um, but where I still have concerns is, is in giving up more and more personal data, I need to see companies sort of prove themselves that they're, that they're able to handle that information in a way that doesn't leave me exposed. And I don't know of any company right now, even, even Google or Microsoft, where I feel that confident that their solutions are so good that I don't have to worry about external security threats. They're, they're sold that way, they're packaged that way. We can turn on two-step authentication all we want. And I still find that in, in the type of world we live in today, that it's, it's still very likely that I'll be put into a position at some point in my usage of these types of devices where someone might be able to get into personal information of mine. So, uh, Oh, go ahead. So, I was going to say, quick thoughts on HealthKit as we slowly route, route up here, because uh, they mentioned a bunch of features, and a lot of people, especially just going through Twitter, as we know, we're all tweeting it out, uh, we're talking about how this could be the game changer. Um, my thoughts on that quickly is that Fitbit already does this, as well as Microsoft Health does everything HealthKit does. You know, I mean, like, the, the, so... the thing I'm going to keep giving Apple credit for is legitimizing an industry. Yeah, so, I, I, I guess. I guess. Fitbit, Fitbit is a known name for those of us who are really into um, lifestyle technology. Um, there are not a lot of us <laughs> no, no, I'm true, but I mean, who are really into that kind of lifestyle technology. And so it's just like every time we hear noise about, you know, the Apple Watch, we see Pebble sales improve. You know, I mean, like, it, it, Apple walking into this space and having these types of press conferences and getting way more tweets on Twitter than anything Microsoft has done in a similar way, um, just legitimizes the industry, which makes people, I think, more willing to look at alternatives to Apple's solution as well. So you see this Apple thing and you think, oh, man, it would be great if I had a smartwatch and a health tracker. Let me see what's available for my phone, my Android phone. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the entire industry just takes an another step forward. So for, for that, I actually do still have to have to give Apple some credit in how they go about... They're almost always late to market, <laughs> um, but I have to give them some credit in that when they get to market, it kind of helps legitimize that market. People go, oh, well, that's a real thing now because Apple's actually doing something. No, 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 true. I, I think, I think the problem is just, just watching the tweets. I think it's, it's us, you know, the influencers, the reporters going, oh, my God, this is going to revolutionize when yeah. reporting should yeah, actually... That's they that's should a frustrating should be actually you say should know better. <laughs> yeah. It should be, wow, that's great. Apple is doing the same thing and Fitbit is doing, and now more people will be have access to it. That's what should be said. You know, that kind no, of No, that, that that I completely agree with. Especially when we're we're dealing with a case of sort of prior art. It's not like we're talking about copyright or yeah. you know, filings or anything like that. But it's not like we haven't been seeing these solutions for a little while. It's not like we haven't seen heart rate monitors on smartwatches for a bit. It's not like we haven't had uh, low power sensors in our phones that can detect movement to help track things like fitness. So no, I mean that that I completely agree with. It it, it is always frustrating when the commentary gets away from the industry that's already established in a way that sort of implies that Apple has invented something, something. that they haven't. But yeah. the, the, thing, the thing I like about that, though, about the way that Apple is so grandiose in their claims, is that it is an opportunity for the rest of us to share the experiences we've already had. I, I mean, like, out of everything that I tweeted during the Apple announcement, as sort of a joke, I did just four tweets like, well, you could get an Apple Watch or you could get this Martian. You could get an Apple Watch or you could get the LG G Watch R. You could get an Apple Watch or you could get the Asus Zen Watch. And those were the most popular things I tweeted out of the entire Apple announcement. So there were people who were looking for information on smartwatches in general who were looking at, you know, like, well, the Apple Watch is this, what are competitors doing? And I think that, that actually gives me a little hope for the future of the wearables industry in general. Yeah. All right, let's fire up, uh, answer a few of these questions, and then round up. Um, we have, actually, the first one here is from uh, Christopher Miles. He says, thoughts on the new Force Touch trackpad uh, instead of clicking? Let me tell you what it is. It's called right-clicking, but it's just called Force 4. You know, you know what I actually kind of like about it, though, is I hate on Apple. I mean, I love... Scrolling and gestures on Apple trackpads, I, I really do think that that experience is second to, to none. Like There is no PC in the PC space that truly does approach the same style of gesture support. 
No, 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 no. I mean, like, on I the, know, on the I know. touchpads. I know, I know. I'm just messing around. I yeah, I mean, because <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to go back to, like, a gaming mouse. But, you know, on the touchpads, I don't know that any PC touchpad has really approached the scrolling and, and uh, pinch to zoom, those types of Very gestures. Well, yeah. But I've always hated on Apple touchpads that it's one giant button. You know, you've got to depress or you, you have that one large click button, and then mm-hmm. you have to have, like, a, 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 a command click to get a right-click con- uh, contextual menu up. Yeah. Um, so them going to something where it's just a tap on the touchpad, like I have on my PCs, is actually another, like, that's a welcome improvement. I'm happy that Apple has ripped that off of PC manufacturers. Uh, I'm just happy they have reached the, the rest of the world, which, is, to me... <laughs> right. But again, it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, hey, kudos, Apple, that actually improves your product, so I'm, I'm glad to see it. Uh, another question from Christopher says, do you think Apple is waiting for an app developer to figure out a killer feature for this watch? I don't think anybody has a bloody idea. I, I think the killer feature has already been delivered, and I think people are looking to make these things more than they are. Yeah. Because uh, I, I think any smart watch, watch is worth its weight in gold, 18 karat gold, 24 karat gold, infused gold, whatever. I think any of them are worth their weight it's worth their price points simply for making the experience with notifications more organic. Mm-hmm. That, you start there. Any other features on there, if you've got a remote control on your watch and you can control your TV with it, or if you can pair it with Bluetooth headphones and play music off of it, or if you can type out messages or do voice command or dictation, all of that's frosting. I would say the, the A number one, and this is where I totally agree with companies like Pebble, A number one service. You've got notifications on your wrist, which is far more discreet than always pulling your phone out of your pocket to look at notifications and small pieces of information. After that, I don't, I mean, it's cool, but I don't really care that much. All right, let's uh, fire up a few more. The problem with the other smartwatches is that they don't have an Apple logo on it. If this device sells really well, it, it just sadly proves how superficial everybody is. We already have been superficial for a very long time, William. A very, very yeah, long and, time. Yeah, and I mean, I, I want to be careful not to get too cranky. I mean, I'm cranky. It's obvious I'm cranky about Apple's announcements today. But I want to be careful not to get too cranky because, I mean, you can kind of leverage similar arguments against Samsung. You can kind of leverage similar arguments against a LG. It, it, that definitely do- now comes down to sort of personal preferences, what it is that you are trying to accomplish with your gadgets, with your technology. And I think, uh, especially especially for those of us who came up into tech as hardcore old school geeks, we're going to have to kind of loosen the reins on things when we start discussing things like worth. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And you guys have heard me complain about this before with tablets. You know, if you've got a tablet with um, uh, made out of plastic and a tablet with the exact same specs made out of metal, the metal tablet should cost more. But we're going to whine and bitch and complain, well, they both have the same processor and the same screen resolution, so they should cost the same. And you're like, well, no. That's not that's not true. <laughs> so if Apple is moving towards becoming a lifestyle and and sort of a um, sort of an integrated services company like that, we can expect that they're going to be trying to make their money off of making these types of moves, where maybe the technology really isn't that much improved over their competitors, but they're making a fashion statement out of it. And the second you make a fashion statement out of anything, it's going to be way more expensive. Yeah, true. Uh, I just got a text from a, a fellow. Um, blogger says we need some balance in our Apple hater aid that we are throwing on here. On here. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't think they're wrong, but, but I don't know who would join us. So. <laughs> um, no, I mean, okay, to, to bring a different perspective quickly before we round up in, in terms of what Apple has done, in design aesthetics for the Apple, um, the new MacBook, I do like what they've done there, but I think, like you said, foregoing those ports really puts a lot of strain in how much you can actually use it in terms of really being productive. Now, if this is just truly for the person that needs a laptop once in a while and has the money to spend $1,500 for it or $600 for it, then sure, um, that would be great. Now, if uh, if you really want to do some performance uh, with that and as well have something ultra light that really isn't it for you. Um, we also actually have one more uh, question here for from someone asking, what's the difference between the three designs? Because he feels confused between the sports they watch as well as the edition. Um, do you want to tackle that, or do you want me to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, so, um, so watch sport is their entry-level model. 
And so this is uh, it's an anodized aluminum. I mean, I'm just reading this off of off of their their site too. But I totally appreciate some confusion because I don't also love the way that this has been named. But Apple Watch Sport is anodized aluminum with a glass front face, and then we move into Apple Watch, which is a stainless steel uh, casing with a sapphire crystal display, and then we move into Apple Watch Edition, which is 18 karat gold for the housing and also the sapphire crystal display. And then, of course, you have uh, sort of a fl- not-as-nice bands on the Apple Watch Sport. You have nicer bands on the Apple Watch, and then you have the nicest bands on the Apple Watch Edition. So also, whatever bands you decide to choose for your Apple Watch experience is going to be a clear indication of how much money you spent. And you will be broadcasting how much money you spent by wearing <laughs> this on your wrist. And I think, I, I don't know if they ever mentioned if, if there were going to be any modules that were compatible with traditional watch bands on the Apple Watch. It doesn't look, it, they all look like they're going to be proprietary connectors. No, no, they, yeah, it's all proprietary. But for people who are looking for a more battery life at 18 hours is what it is. Um, I saw a company, I just can't remember the name, I'll put the link for you guys, who have a proprietary band that doubles the battery life, so you should be able to get uh, 36 hours or... Right. Or more. Um, That's uh, kind of a cool idea. Um, but the band itself is worth this price. That almost I think it's two hundred dollars or two from two hundred to two ninety nine. So the yeah, different that's not, as, that's not as nice. <laughs> well, because like I've been using the Qualcomm Talk. I, like I was wearing the Qualcomm Talk, which is still one of my favorite smartwatches today. And it's a really clunky design, but it does incorporate the battery into the watch band on the bottom class. So you can which, always upgrade it. Well, I mean, which could be a smart solution for Android Wear. So if you have an internal battery, you could have something that connects to some in some way. I mean, like, it, it would be a design challenge. You probably wouldn't be able to use standard 22-millimeter watch bands, but you could come up with something similar where the watch band itself could then also further power the watch, which would watch, be pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. But anyway, that is it, guys. We will continue to answer the questions uh, in the comments in the description. And uh, for George, thank you for the uh, score update. Go Arsenal, we beat down. <laughs> and then also, that. we want to hear from you guys what you think about Apple's announcement today. I mean, I we, we're obviously not the biggest Apple fans, but we know we have some Apple fans who follow our shows out there. So drop us some comments down below what you're looking forward to. It, does this sort of solidify your idea of staying in the Apple ecosystem, or does this make you want to try another device, like maybe, say, the Pebble Color that's going to be coming out, or a Martian, or a Microsoft Band, just to see what uh, the competition is doing? So uh, drop us some comments because I, uh, I want to hear what you guys think about uh, Apple and their current fashion strategy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, leave us a comment below. Uh, we'll answer your questions if you have any. And um, if you're going to pick one up, either the new back MacBook or the Apple Watch, let us know. Give us your thoughts why you would actually pick it up. I uh, definitely want to share that with uh, others and see what you think. Otherwise, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Juan, for joining me. I know you're busy. It's a busy day. I'm also, <laughs> I saw I, I'm also going to be running out here quickly. But uh, don't forget to subscribe to all our channels. Definitely check out Mr. Juan Bagnell at Some Gadget Guy. Uh, somegadgetguy.com, search him on YouTube, Some Gadget Guy or Juan Bagnell, and subscribe to his channel. He's got some great stuff, great audio content. And also uh, follow us at Board at Work on YouTube, as well as all our other social media outlets at Board at Work. And this is Thunder E uh, saying thank you, and always enjoy your entertainment. <laughs>